Hello lovely people, while I'm charging my super cap bank, I'm gonna tell you what's happening with my power situation at the moment. So the last update that you had probably was that I kind of tried to connect the DC-DC charger in a way that would be working only when I need it to work and would be off when I don't need it to work because I don't want it to drain the battery and I don't want it to be constantly drawing the full 40 amps from the front when the car starts straight away. So I shopped in AliExpress a bit and I got a few relays, a few modules. So those are these. So there's one that is voltage dependent and there's another one over there, it is of a mess, that is time dependent. So how this works is that this little board can connect and disconnect the relay on a voltage that you were setting. So I did set this voltage at about 13 volts, I think 12.8, because my battery is resting at... Uh, 12 2 12 3 uh, when you drive it and turn off the engine it drops to 12.6 or something so we need it to be a bit higher so when the voltage uh, from the battery is above 12.8 13 that means when the car is on this really engages and it engages both of these inputs so one input turns on the dc dc charger and the other input enables a switch inside that cuts this 40 amps in half in 20 amps so right when the car starts it starts drawing only 20 amps and then the second relay is connected to this other wire and this is timed relay so this i set for 10 minutes and what does after 10 minutes this relay disconnects one of the wires and then the dc dc charger can pull the whole 40 amps so in this way i'm drawing only what i need and i do have time for the front battery to recharge for 10 minutes after the car starts so the alternator is not suffering and it's fine so as long as the journey is longer than 10 minutes potentially this battery can be charged in full 40 amps if it's less than 10 minutes it's only 20 amps but again it's totally fine because this battery i noticed it's always full now just to check the progress i'm drawing 0.1 amps 1.2 volts so it is a while to go i'm not rushing i don't want it to be like charged super fast so it has time it can charge for half an hour up to 13 and volts and fine now i try to have something monitoring the voltage of the main battery that goes into the dc dc charger and the voltage here on the lithium and potentially the current draw just to see how much my system draws current so i did try quite a few different uh from aliexpress thingies with the shunts and everything so this shunt is like 300 amps but the problem is the all the voltage detectors on shunt they're detecting voltage drop depending on the resistance that the shunt is now the problem is that when you extend the shunt all the way into the front on small wires that resistance adds and the amperage is not correct because the meter doesn't account for the wire resistance that goes in the front it, ca it accounts only for these so if you have the shunt very close to the actual meter it's going to be correct but if you extend the wires it becomes not correct so this is the biggest issue so because of that i bought something else so i bought this one so this is a meter that is in front as well just over there there's a screen and this is a ray i believe it's radio transmission does it say it doesn't say but i think it works on radio frequencies so this is like a transmitting box that you have your voltage from the main battery then you have this clamp that goes again everything now is just temporary so don't judge uh, the clamp goes on the main power wire that goes into the distribution and it measures the amperage, the voltage, and it transmits into that receiver that can be connected on a battery or via USB. So I think, yeah, it's safe everything to leave. Let's go in the front. I'm going to show you how everything works. Yeah, I am trying a tablet as well, just for fun. So this one. 
This one is the on the lithium sits and this one sits on the front battery and monitors the current going from the alternator into the DC DC charger. Now everything is off. So if I'm going to connect ignition, everything comes on and you can see this one is flickering. So you're not going to see, but it shows 12.4 volts and zero, zero amp. So it doesn't draw anything because the voltage is below the threshold of the relay and it does not engage the DC-DC charger. Now my lithium sits on 13.328 volts and currently it draws six and a half amps. So those six and a half amps is like standby mode for all my amplifiers and the DSP. If I disconnect the whole system, because now the system is on, if I disconnect the system with the switch, like that this screen goes off because i wired it on the remote wire otherwise i wouldn't be able to monitor the voltage with the engine off and ignition off when i run only my system so now i have a switch that connects the remote directly to the battery and this way i can play my music on lithium as much as i want and it's not connected to the front at all so this little thing it shows a lot of things now like 86 watts just on standby with nothing playing six and a half amps now it does show more than i need but the very very good thing is the refresh rate so all these meters like this one it refreshes twice per second so like two fps now this one refreshes 20 times per second so the voltage or amperage i can actually monitor it almost in real life and it does have a function i cannot press it it has a graph that it can draw you connect it to a lab it's, it's a very very cool meter it costs like 28 30 pounds with shipping and it does literally everything this is just for monitoring your battery now let me show you a typical case scenario so i'm gonna put the switch again back to remote as it's like normal so i'm turning on my ignition like that this comes on this comes on my system comes on now 12.2 uh, volts nothing is drawn i'm gonna turn on the engine and again now this one stays the same so it's rebooting now because the uh, remote went out and this one you can see 22 28 31 amps 33 so this it shows amperage wrong so now it shows 34 amps but in reality it's drawing much less let me actually check it's drawing uh let me remove this one and show you there we go it's drawing 22 amps and again this discrepancy is because of the wires going in the front and it adds actually let me let me turn off the engine yeah because it's very loud diesel you know because it's again is the shunt it's an 100 amp shunt and that shunt adds like the wires add resistance to the shunt and that's why it's not correct so it shows 34 but in reality it's 22 so it shows like 10 amps more and when it draws more current uh sometimes on that meter i see like 70 or 80 amps but it's not correct because again added resistance just because of the wires but it's still a good thing to monitor as long as you know it's not calibrated but as long as you know what's happening as well i'm trying this tablet so i bought this tablet for 30 pounds it's a galaxy s2 second hand 30 pounds uh, for now i have it on bluetooth connected to the system i can have split screen so maps it, it, this is everything that i need maps for navigation and playing music and that's it i don't need anything else so for this i can switch uh to a player power amp and i can play whatever i want now the plan is to connect the usb because it has micro usb into smsl pro that goes coax into the back into the dsp and then i can have the best possible signal because in this player i have all my music like everything everything it's like flax 
from literally ages ago so i have loads and loads of music uh, in the best possible quality better than bluetooth sitting in here just for crit critical listening now at the moment again i bought a cheap uh holder from china that goes into the cd slot just like that this cost like three or four pounds but later if i'm gonna like it if i'm gonna connect all the wires and everything i'm gonna kind of mold it into the front panel because all of this it's empty there's nothing there so i don't use that space so i can have my tablet in there and have it permanently installed but then with the tablet all the other issues like turn on off screen timeout and everything but that's gonna be another huddle to overcome but it's fun it's fun oh let me show you another thing okay this little cool thing so this is a internals from a bluetooth speaker simple as that uh it has like on on actually it can turn on if you hold it see this light comes on and it connects to my phone so this is internals from a bluetooth speaker that has a microphone so uh now and probably you know Whenever you're playing music or whatever through Helix Bluetooth or any kind of other Bluetooth, you cannot have calls. And if somebody calls you, you have to put like loudspeaker on your phone. So this one is going to allow me to connect my phone to kind of a Bluetooth speaker. I'm not sure where I'm going to install it yet. Uh, so this is a 3.7 yeah 3.7 volt battery but i can have a small dc dc charger that gives 3.7 from ignition of the car and then these two wires are the speaker outputs from the built amplifier so this little chip inside is an amplifier it has here this one jl you see jl that's a bluetooth chip and this is analog output from the amplifier so what i can do i can feed this analog output into the helix dsp high level or analog input and have it priority over bluetooth so whenever somebody calls me uh my phone is connected to this it's going to send the signal over bluetooth through these wires into the dsp analog inputs so it's going to overtake whatever music is playing uh, this i believe this connector is the microphone so just any kind of microphone that you can wire and put it maybe like here or somewhere like on the top so that you could have it there but this one can be literally hidden anywhere and basically what i'm gonna have is a bluetooth system for free because i got that bluetooth speaker for totally free i didn't pay for it anything and it's just cool so the only thing i'll need to figure out is to turn it on and off i need to somehow wire the switch so it would uh, turn on this with the ignition and turn off when the ignition is off so maybe i'm gonna wire a relay or something on the switch just disconnect the switch and uh, i don't know we'll see it depends but just another thing to figure out but it's kind of cool because you know that i like to do stuff very very cheap and this doesn't cost me anything so yeah uh, I have my tablet, I'm going to try to, for now, it's going to be like disconnected so I can hide it somewhere, but I can play music, I can do navigation, I have two meters to monitor my voltage, just for fun, for now, maybe later I'm going to remove everything, because later I won't need it, as long as I will know what's happening, and make sure that all charging and everything works as it should be working. And this, now, what do we have, 1.5 volts, how much are you drawing? 0.7 amps cool so this is charging and now i just need to clean up the wires because i know that those two relays are working perfectly there's no issues there i need to manage the cable and everything this is still here i'm uh, still planning to recap it and put another two different amplifiers and another thing i have two empty channels here and two empty channels for the dsp so i'm planning to play around with differential rear fill i'm gonna put some kind of little boxes here on the side just temporary maybe i'm gonna use the alpine 30 mc speakers the three inch little speakers that i have just to play around and update you on the rear fill how to set it up and everything how to tune the rear fill let me know if you're interested in that but yeah this is pretty much it if anybody wants i can put links for this thingy because it's very very cool and thank you very much for watching guys and i will see you in the next one